Hey what's up guys? Today I'll show you a mystery thriller film, Contra Tiempo. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins as Virginia, a distinguished lawyer, visits Adrian in his apartment suite in Barcelona. Adrian, a successful entrepreneur who owns a tech company, is currently out on bail. He was arrested for killing his hormone partner, short named Mistress, in the remote hotel Bella Vista. Adrian has hired a lawyer to defend him, but the lawyer later hires a helper, Virginia, to assist him in the case. Virginia tells him that the prosecution has a witness ready to testify. Virginia advises Adrian that they only have three hours to make a counter deposition, so he must cooperate with her and tell the truth. Adrian maintains his innocence, saying that he was only framed. He states that someone knew about his relationship with mistress and was blackmailing them. They were instructed to go to the hotel, bring 100,000 euros. In their room, Adrian receives a message from Mistress's phone. Adrian recalls that Mistress does not have her phone. They realize it was a trap. However, before they can get out of the room, someone smashes Adrian's head against a mirror, knocking him unconscious for a moment. When he wakes up, Adrian realizes that the attacker was gone. He then sees Mistress lying dead. At this point, the police get over the room and arrest Adrian. After Adrian's testimony, Virginia tells him that there is no way for someone to get inside the room, unless that person has keys. Adrian asserts that everything was set up to incriminate him. He adds that the police could fake stories to further implicate him in the crime. Virginia pressures Adrian into confessing about what happened before the murder incident. Thus, Adrian narrates further back to the past. He recounts his affair with Mistress, who is a married person like him. There was a time they met up in the Spanish town of Birge and stayed in a cottage. In the morning before they left, Adrian's wife called in. To hide his whereabouts, he tells his wife that he is in Paris. As they drive back to Barcelona, Adrian and Mistress decide to end their affair, because it is hurting their own marriages. While they talk about it, Adrian swerves to avoid a deer. But then his vehicle collides with another car, which crashes into a tree. Adrian and Mistress are not hurt. But the driver of the other car, the 23-year-old young man Daniel Garrido, died in the crash. Adrian tries to call the police, but Mistress explains that it was not their fault. She says that their lives might be compromised because of the incident. They attempt to drive away, but the engine of their vehicle does not start. A few moments later, Adrian and Mistress hear another vehicle passing by the road. They act fast to make it appear that the two bumped into each other. The driver asks if they need help. Suddenly, Daniel's phone rings. Mistress rushes back to the car to pick up the phone, hang up and pretend that it was the insurance. Once the driver is gone, the two plot to dispose of the car and the body. Mistress stays beside Adrian's car to ask for help. Meanwhile, Adrian drives to the lake in Daniel's car. With Daniel inside the trunk of the vehicle, Adrian dumps the car into the lake. Then, Mistress fetches Adrian near the lake. She then tells him how his car was fixed. While Mistress was waiting for a tow truck to come, an automotive engineer named Thomas passed by. He offered help to Mistress, who said a deer crashed into her car. Thomas heaved the vehicle to his home and repaired it. While Thomas was working with the car, Mistress was introduced to Elvira, his wife, whom he met at a theater group. Inside their house, Mistress saw a picture of their son. She recognized it as Daniel Garrido, the young man who died in the accident. As Mistress was about to leave, Elvira called Daniel, and it turns out, Mistress took Daniel's phone with her. She quickly hid the phone. Later, Daniel's parents enter back in when they hear the phone ring. They thought that Daniel had forgotten his phone. When she got to Adrian's car, Mistress fixed the driver's seat. This inflamed the suspicions of Thomas towards Mistress. The next day, Adrian sells the car in a junkyard. Afterward, he bids farewell to Mistress, knowing he may never see her again. However, a few days later, Adrian is called to the police station. Thomas was able to report Adrian's plate number to the police. The lawyer comes up with an alibi, saying that Adrian was in Paris. He then bribes the police to erase Adrian's name from Daniel's case file. Sometime later, a news report comes out that Daniel stole money from the bank where he worked and faked his death in order to escape. Mistress is confronted by Adrian. She confesses to him that she took Daniel's wallet with her when they disposed of the young man's body. Then, she sneaked into the laptop of her husband Bruno, who worked at the same bank. Mistress hijacked Daniel's account and diverted money into it. Adrian tells Mistress that her actions are wrong. However, Mistress threatens Adrian that she will implicate him as well if she falls to the police. The next few days are favorable for Adrian. 
with the successful entry of Adrian's company into the Asian market, he receives the Entrepreneur of the Year Award. Thomas disguises himself as a reporter to talk to Adrian. While there, Thomas sees that Adrian uses the same cigarette lighter that he saw while repairing the car. He emotionally asks Adrian to pinpoint where Daniel's body is, while the guards take him away. After several days, Adrian receives a parcel from Daniel Garrido. It contains a picture of a lake, and instructions to bring mistress to Hotel Bella Vista for 100,000 euros. Adrian presumes that the blackmailer is the man, who drove by them after the accident. Adrian further supposes that the man followed him into the lake, where he disposed of Daniel's car, and that the man demands 100,000 euros in exchange for his silence. Virginia scolds Adrian for diverting from Daniel's story. She says that if Adrian hides behind the blackmailer, it may make him look less guilty of Daniel's death, and more guilty of Mistress's murder. Virginia then asks him three questions. The first is about the message that Adrian received on his cell phone. Second, as to why the attacker did not take the money with him if that was his intent. Lastly, as to how the attacker accessed the hotel room, if he did not have the keys. Adrian is unable to respond, so Virginia concludes with some answers. She says that the message Adrian received was probably sent by the blackmailer who had the phone of mistress. The blackmailer apparently threatened mistress into throwing away her phone before she and Adrian boarded the train to the hotel. Virginia then suggests to Adrian that he can tell the court that he saw the attacker's face and claim that it was Thomas Garrido. He had strong motives to commit murder because his son was killed. She also says that Thomas lost his faith in the police, so he had no other choice but to force Adrian and mistress to face their crime. Thomas plot to kill mistress and incriminate Adrian worked so perfectly that everyone believed Adrian was the murderer. Virginia concludes that in order for Adrian to be acquitted of mistress's murder, he must implicate Thomas, but Adrian must admit his part in the death of Daniel. Adrian reckons that admitting to his role in Daniel's death is worthless if they could not explain how Thomas got out of the room without any trace. Virginia points out that Elvira, Thomas' wife, worked at the Hotel Bella Vista and could have been Thomas' accomplice. Virginia tells Adrian that Elvira could have opened windows in the room, allowing Thomas to escape and leave Adrian as the prime suspect in the murder. Thomas scattered the money around the room to further incriminate Adrian. When the police arrived there, Elvira sneaked into the room and closed the window, covering Thomas' retreat. Virginia and Adrian continue talking when they receive information that the prosecution witness is the driver who passed by Adrian and mistress just after the accident. Adrian panics, but Virginia calms him. She comes up with another scenario, that Adrian was in Paris, like in his alibi, and that mistress was the only one involved in Daniel's accident. Adrian was only in the hotel because mistress asked for help. This would then turn Adrian into one of mistress's victims. Virginia then attempts to connect mistress directly to Daniel's fate. She suggests hiding something that belongs to mistress in Daniel's car. Then it would claim that mistress acted alone. Adrian says that the witness can place him at the accident scene. He adds that the lawyer wants to bribe the witness into silence. Virginia reveals that she is lying when she says that the prosecution has a witness. Then, Virginia pressures Adrian into telling her the location where he dumped Daniel's car. Later, Adrian confesses that Daniel was not dead, only unconscious. As he forced the car into the lake, Daniel woke up. Adrian says it was too late, and there was no other choice, but to push the car, killing Daniel. An autopsy would expose that Daniel was actually drowned. Hearing that, Virginia is outraged, overcome by emotions. Later, she composes herself, saying she will not expose this to the judge. We think that this was just her emotions, that she was shocked to learn that Daniel died under such circumstances. But a good lawyer like Virginia will not do anything that would incriminate her client or make her lose the case and taint her record. So from this point, Virginia could not have been Virginia, but someone else. Virginia implies that Adrian is twisting the narrative to make it appear that mistress engineered their deceit. Virginia tells Adrian that, according to medical reports, mistress suffered from anxiety attacks because of the guilt she experienced. To regain her dignity, she wanted to tell Daniel's parents the truth about her involvement in Daniel's death and to compensate them for their loss. Obviously, Adrian would disagree. Mistress arranged a meeting with Daniel's parents at Hotel Bella Vista, where Avira worked. Mistress tricked Adrian into believing that someone knew what happened and was blackmailing them. But this was a lie. She convinced Adrian that the blackmailer was the man who passed by them after the accident and that the blackmailer demanded money. She went to Hotel Bella Vista and waited for Adrian. When Adrian arrived, 
mistress told him that they should confess the truth about Daniel's death, compensate his parents, and surrender to the police. Then, Adrian receives mistress's message, and realizes that he fell into her trap. At this point, Adrian loses his mind, and kills mistress, and smashes his head into the mirror. When the police arrive, he claims innocence as he is arrested. Virginia maintains that Adrian has the capability to twist the narrative, and get away with his crime. However, Thomas waited patiently until he could exploit the situation. He occupied a vacant unit in front of Adrian's building, and studied all his movements. He spotted that the lawyer was able to recruit Virginia Goodman. Thomas followed in the lawyer's footsteps, but Virginia was able to set up surveillance to observe Thomas' movements. This is apparently why she can tell Adrian that at the moment, Thomas is observing them from his position. Virginia continues to pressure Adrian, until he confesses that he indeed murdered Mistress. Interestingly, it is unbelievable that he is able to tell Virginia that he murdered Mistress, just like that. It is obvious that he is vulnerable at this point. This scene can be judged that this is a blunder that would knock Adrian down. Virginia and Adrian take a 10-minute break, but she hurriedly exits the flat. The lawyer messages Adrian, telling him that the witness was in fact, the other driver. The lawyer adds that he has already neutralized the witness. The lawyer asks Adrian about his meeting, but their call is interrupted by high-pitched tones. Adrian realizes that their talk was being recorded through the pen he used to mark the location of Daniel's car. Adrian remembers everything that happened during his meeting with Virginia. He peeks into the building in front of his apartment. Adrian sees Virginia beside Thomas. She reveals that she is actually Elvira Garrido, disguised as Virginia. An awestruck moment how ingenious and cunning Thomas and Elvira are. Being from an acting background, they manage to pretend like they're somebody else. This scene successfully nailed in making the story excellent on how they were able to use their talent to exact retribution from Adrian, who thought he could hide behind his corrupt attorney and escape the case. The movie ends when the real Virginia appears in Adrian's unit. At the same time, with Adrian's confession recorded by Elvira, Thomas calls the police to tell the truth about Daniel Garrido's death. Everyone will feel very sorry for Adrian. He foolishly entrusted himself to Elvira, disguised as Virginia, confessing everything to her, without knowing that he was being fooled by the whole Garrido family. The movie is truly a heartbreaking scene that defines the whole movie itself, contra tiempo, a setback. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Peace out.